Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to play for you my favorite piano libraries. I'm going to play my favorite libraries for cinematic music, for pop, for rock, for jazz, you name it, so that you can hear how they sound and make up your mind which library is right for your productions. So we're going to have some real fun today right after this. So I want to get a thing out of the way as soon as possible. In my opinion, there's no such thing as too many piano libraries. I have tons of them. Now, the reason is because every piano has its own character, even in the real world, even from the same brand, two exact same pianos will still sound different, you know, even if they're in the same model. The second thing I want to say is that I'm not a big fan of comparing libraries with MIDI files. So you have a MIDI file, you play it back and you assign different libraries to this. I really don't think this is the best way to do this. It gives you an idea, so it's a valid test, but every piano has its own velocity response, its own character, a different way that it reacts to your playing. So when I play a piano, I tend to play different things on, depending on the sound that the piano has. So I'm going to improvise for each library. I'm not going to play identical things. I haven't planned the things that I'm going to play, but I think that this way you will understand which library fits each style and what kind of music you can make with each library. So let's get started. The first piano I want to talk about is not a software library. It's actually this baby here, it's the Montage Piano, and this also, of course, exists on the Modi X. Now, why do I show you this? Because I'm an unashamed Yamaha Piano fanboy. I own a Yamaha C2 Grand Piano, and trust me, when you make an investment like this, you need to make sure that the piano sound is exactly what you want. Like, Steinways are amazing, Bosendorfers have a completely different tone, but let's go and play the Yamaha CFX Piano. One of the pieces that I love playing when I'm trying out a piano is the Pathetic Sonata by Beethoven. Because it has this really thunderous first chord and then... Now why do I show you this piano first? That's because this piano, in my opinion, is the Swiss Army of pianos. It cuts through in live situations, if you're playing, if you're gigging, it cuts through with pop songs, it has a really nice punchy bottom end, it has attack, a very strong fundamental, it's not nasal, it's not quirky, it's really, really lovely. And the thing is that with hardware synths, you always get this kind of instant, you know, response when you play because they've tailored the velocity curves and they've tailored the way that the samples react to your playing so that you don't feel disconnected from the instrument. And if you want to emulate the same experience in software, which I'm going to show you from now on, you need to have a really good audio interface, you need to have SSD drives. Latency for piano is the worst thing that you can have because it's a percussive instrument. So like drums, if you have even the tiny bit of latency, it will throw you off or it will feel a bit weird. Now, before I move on to the next library, I want to do a shameless plug for one of the sounds that I've designed for the Yamaha Montage and the Modi X4 OS 3, and this is Scoring Melancholy. This is one of the sounds that I sound designed and they're right there in the instruments when you buy them if you have the latest operating system. So this one is my attempt to have like a more cinematic sound on the montage, a little bit more mellow, a little bit darker with a little bit more character and a little bit less perfect, if that makes sense. So let's listen to this. And 
And if you pay attention, listen to these note offs. See, it has a very pronounced pedal off sound, and I wanted that. Now, for pop music, for things that need to be bright and punchy, I wouldn't use a piano like this, but for cinematic stuff, I want as much character as possible. You know, I want to go like. It's part of the breathing, it's part of the expression. You know, when you lift the pedal, there's like a, this whoop thing that happens. And for stuff like this, like really quiet passages. You know, some people try to get rid of these things when they're recording a piano, but actually, I find that they contribute to the sound a lot. Again, not for pop, not for stuff like this. Now, this piano, of course, has some tricks because it's the montage, so I did some sound design there. And anyway, I'm not going to go too deep about this because I've already done a video so you can check it out and you can actually check out all the sounds that I've sound designed for the Montage and the Modi X. Let's move on to the first software library now. And this is called Emotional Piano and it's from Sound Iron. So this is a very characterful piano, it's warm, it's big, it has a beautiful low end, a lot of noises and... see that? Now, maybe this piano is not very suitable for pop unless it's a ballad, but and maybe it's not, you know, the piano that I would choose for really fast things, even though it plays really nicely. But it's amazing for like setting a mood, you know, even like long chords. The next one is Noir from Native Instruments, and it's a really lovely piano. You can hear the difference in character. They, they're completely different instruments. To me, it's not the same thing anymore, you know? Nice and thunderous as well. Beautiful dynamics. And please excuse me if I play too long on each piano, but that's what a good library makes me do. You know, I like playing it and enjoying it. I can't stop. And this would be really nice for jazz as well, you know, if you want to go a little bit more. Now, 
it's it's not too bright, but you know you can really hammer it. The next one is Keyscape and. Of course, Keyscape is a beautiful instrument, it does so many things, it's not just for acoustic pianos, but here's the piano and uh, I really like it. Again, very different character. I think they have different presets with brighter sounds. Um, this is a very nice well-rounded piano, has a little bit more mid-range, it's a little bit more nasal, if you ask me. See, it's a little bit... a little bit in the 800s, I think. Now, the only thing that this piano has that was kind of a surprise to me when I tried it is that it has a lot of noise that adds up the more notes you play. Check it out. Check out the noise. Hear that? So, because of this, Spectrosonics, they have a denoiser inside the actual plugin, and you can turn it on, and the noise almost disappears. Um, I don't mind the noise actually so much. For some things, especially for like film music and stuff like this, sometimes I want the noise. So, this is a little bit of a, let's call it dirtier library, but I like it, you know, it's nice to have this color. So this is Keyscape. The next one is the True Key Pianos Italian, and I think they have three pianos there. Uh, they also have a Bosendorfer and a Steinway, but this is by far my favorite. And it's a very bright, big fazioli, you know, kind of... You know? It's good for rock music. So, it's very punchy, I would say it's even punchier than the Yamaha, but it, it, of course, when you want to play soft notes, it's still very bright. This is a massive piano as far as I know. I'm trying to play forte and uh, pianissimo as much as I can, but you can tell that this piano invites you to play loud, play fortissimo, play like... But it's very nice, it's very responsive, many pianos cannot do this, you know, like really short staccato notes, so this is great. Great for jazz as well, you know, but also, you know, if you want to go like, you know, stuff like this, like rockabilly, it will cut through the mix. Actually, it's so powerful that, you know, sometimes I need to filter it a little bit. Next one is Quantum Leap Pianos, and this is the Yamaha C7. And, you know, myself being a Yamaha fan, I enjoy this piano. It's very nice. Let me play it for you. Let's try the soft ones.
I love this piano. I've used it many times in many productions. It's uh, really nice and bright if you need it to, you know. Uh, and it has a very nice low end as well. I like it, but it doesn't really, you know, completely overpower your mix, which is something that I enjoy. And actually, Yamaha pianos tend to be very good with that. The next piano is the Grand Three. Now, this piano, I've been using it since I remember myself. I was using Grand, the Grand, the original one, then the Grand Two, and the Grand Three, and it never disappointed me. This piano, I use it all the time when I'm working with pop musicians, with artists, and they want like a very punchy, bright piano sound that is like pretty much everyone likes it. This is actually the Steinway model. So when I'm not sure about a client, what kind of style of music they're into, but I know they're kind of leaning towards pop or rock, that's my go-to piano. It's very kind of impressive, you know? And it's bright. Has these nice pedal sounds as well, but like for pop ballads, you know, this kind of If you want to go on stage and play loud and you want to make sure that you're heard and you are using a virtual instrument, there is no way, no way you won't cut through with this piano. And this is one of the pianos that can play really fast. And when I say fast, I mean like You know, trills and all these things, it's very, very punching and it has a very, very good attack. Next in line, we have the Novel Piano and that's an entirely cinematic piano, okay? This is very soft, very dark. Let's play it. So you get the point. It's uh, almost like like a felt piano, like you have the concertino on, so you can... But it has a beautiful, smooth, almost like a cloudy sound to it. It really takes you places. And this is actually free, by the way. I've done a video about it. Check it out. And the next one is Eagle, and that actually comes with Halion Sonic 3. It's part of the library, so it's kind of unfair to compare it to the other pianos because this is part of a big library, but nevertheless, I use it all the time. Again, I use it a lot for pop music, when I want something lightweight, but it really sounds good. Let me play this for you. Again, this is a more percussive kind of piano, so it's very short, very staccato if you wanted to. I mean, you get what I mean. And you can still do nice quiet passages as well.
Next, we have another piano from Sound Iron, and this is one of the most colorful and characterful pianos I've ever used. This is the granny piano, or busted granny piano, but it sounds so good. Check it out. I mean, the strings are broken, it's in really bad shape, but that's what makes it special. You know, this brings a smile to my face. Listen. So I think that you can go places with this one. You can go from like a... Beautiful. And this could be the John Lennon Imagine Piano. Do you want me to make a video on how to create this sound inside Cubase? If yes, leave a comment down below, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and share this video with whoever you think they might be interested in me doing this. If I get enough comments down below, I'm gonna make a video about this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed the libraries, I hope that now you have an idea at least which ones I use for my needs. As you can see, I use a lot of libraries and I'm just scratching the surface here on what I'm using. These are just 10, but I have at least maybe 30 piano libraries installed on my system. I really hope you had fun watching this. Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.